your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from Celebrate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. I could even say hello because today, uh, as we are recording this, is Monday 24th of February and this is Rosenmontag, Rose Monday, German Mardi Gras here, but as you can see, I'm sitting here in the evening recording startup news with Chris from New York, and I'm not celebrating. Christian, how are you doing, my man? I'm good. I always hated carnival fashion. Kid, I'm sorry. Anyway. <laughs> well, we may tell the people that I'm born and raised in and around Mainz, which, which is one of the centers of German Mardi Gras, like uh, New Orleans and so it's in my jeans I don't have any choice let us get to the show here you're listening to this month in German startups February 2020 as I said this recording was done in the evening German time on the 24th of February 2020 so the time until the last recording is a little bit short and you'll notice that we have shorter news if you are new to our podcasts we are wrapping up the startup news of the german speaking area in a monthly recording from frankfurt and new york have a look at our website www.startuprate.io or www.startup.radio and you will find all the links to our recording and the articles we are quoting from there some of the sources are in English, some of them are in German, and of course we do have our emails, Twitter, LinkedIn pages, video interview, as well as Christian's homepage. Our news is quite short. This is due to the fact that we're trying to shrink them, as well as we that we only had approximately three weeks since the last news, but we'll try to keep it very low for the foreseeable future. Enabler. This recording was made possible by Hessen Trade and Invest. Learn more about our enabler here, www.invest-in-hessen.com. We're running Tech Startups Germany together with our enabler um, on startups at a Series A stage or even more mature video and audio podcasts. You can find a link here. Housekeeping. Time to brag. StartupRate.io, with all its sub podcast has surpassed 100,000 subscribers. Guys, you're awesome. We are ecstatic. We use data from our hosting company and did as Buzzsprout suggested measuring 90 days active subscribers. This may be a bit biased since we started our measurement period around Christmas, the best time of the year for our podcast, but we, but we had as of February 24th 2020 exactly 102,497 subscribers. We are very grateful. Thank you so much, guys. And admittedly, for the first ever episode that was aired, I had less than 100 listeners. So I assume you can say it's a growth story. Talking about the ecosystem, Christian. Yes. So uh, ecosystem after uh, 2019 is now over for nearly two months, but we uh, now see the first VC numbers for the whole year of 2019 being published um, and found a couple of articles about this. So PitchBook goes very heavy on the metaphors and says the European VC's stellar decade drives a unicorn stampede. So uh, basically saying um, that in general, the whole uh, trend looks very great for European startups, saying the past decade has seen Europe's venture capital ecosystem go from a nascent market to a full-fledged industry. By the end of 2019, there were 40 European startups with a valuation of more than $1 billion. According to PitchBook data, 14 of those became unicorns within the last year. So trends are ticking upwards. Then there is um, Inshore Techs led German fintech VC in 2019. Um, fintech being one of the strongholds in Germany, I would say, in, in the uh, ecosystem um, of startups. 
This is an article from Fintech Schweiz Digital Finance News and numbers there or quote from there was Introtech startups in Germany raised a record of 442 million euros in funding in 2019, which is up a staggering 216 percent from the 140 million euros in the previous year. The figure made Intratech the most successful segment within Germany's fintech sector, according to an analysis by consulting company Barco Consulting. And we have something about PropTech, uh, German business and economics paper Handelsblatt writes Sturm und Drangzeit, meaning here, for example, that there is a rapid expansion and easy funding is now coming to an end after WeWork's IPO failed. So that is um, a bit more of a critical view on the overall startup ecosystem as a whole, not specifically German or European. But um, yeah, uh, Jörn, as always being the um, Renaissance soul that he is also put in the show notes a link to the Wikipedia page of what Sturm and Drang in Germany was. It was a period in uh, literature, I would say. Was it also in arts? At least in literature. I totally agree on literature. And there is new fundraising going on for 2020 already. We found two noteworthy news. Atomico raises 820 million fund to back European founders, writes Sifted. I quote from the article, European venture capital firm Atomico has cemented its place in the ranks of venture capital royalty. It just added a new mega fund of 820 million. That's a far bigger than the funds announced by other European focused venture capital firms Baldechan, Northone and Axel last year and it brings Atomico's total assets under management to 2.7 billion US dollars. It raised its previous fund of 765 million in 2017. And there is, speaking about Renaissance, Da Vinci Capital, they announced a 277 million euro fund for European fintechs. I quote from the article from EU Startups. Established in 2008, Da Vinci Capital says it adds value to its portfolio companies by partnering with founders to improve corporate governance, financial performance, mergers and acquisitions, capital structure and environmental and social policies. Da Vinci Capital has been seeded by DEG, a German development financing institution who acts as an anchor investor for its new fund with an initial investment of 30 million. DEG is part of KFW, the German promotional bank. With the presence of around 80 representative offices worldwide, KFW promotes sustainable finance both in its domestic market in Germany and in international markets, including developing and emerging markets. Whew, that was a lot. Let's talk about hubs here. Frankfurt Rhein Main. Frankfurt based fintech TraxPay completes management buyout, transforming from an AG, a PLC, to a GmbH, an LTD, with management buying out old investors. The idea of the company is to move money along supply chains with the products. We had our first interview with them, including one of the now bought out investors in 2014, published October 31st. Wait, I have a typo there. 2014. You can tune in there and you can see we've come a long way since. Sedui, a Koblenz, Germany based provider of school apps extended its seed financing to around 2 million. Sadui is a startup providing tools for mobile communication and education, especially to schools. Then there is an article by Petro, our community manager, Discover the Eight Graduates from Founder Institute Frankfurt by Petro Ferreira on Hello Frankfurt related to it is our interview with three of the founders. It's a video or audio interview, make your choice. And there is Safe Troid AG gets ruling from the D district court Amtsgericht in their favor. A former trustee has to hand over 3.8 million from ICO proceeds. You may remember them from the unfortunate PR stunt acting like a scam for one day. 
a global premiere of their ICO back in 2017 with their founder is also a link you can find here. And the last one from Frankfurt before I hand over back to Chris, Frankfurt based big data startup Beta. We've interviewed them as well. You find links here. Released the world's first real time tradable crypto index. That's an achievement. Chris, what are you doing? Yeah, well, there's just a little thing to add from the not Frankfurt region, but from the Cologne region, Rhineland, um, which now is going to be the center of a new fund called Gründerfonds Rhineland. Um, it aims to close its fund at 60 million euros in order to support funders from the Rhineland region. Um, we have some more details about that in the show notes. And that even already concludes the uh, hub section of the podcast and lets us move on to company news. Um, we often talk about groceries and the German uh, retail sector here. Now the retail giant Aldi with its revenue of more than 30 billion euros attacks meal kit companies like HelloFresh, 1.2 billion euros, or Marley Spoon with its 64, 1 million euros in revenue, and now sells uh, prep meals as well for a price of below 5 euros for a dinner for two. Um, maybe the other most contested area right now, even in Germany or also in Germany, are uh, electrical scooters or the scooter wars, as they are often labeled. So, for example, we have Berlin-based Tier Mobility, the European e-scooter rental, uh, European e-scooter rental startup, which adds another 40 million euros to its Series B. It operates in 55 cities across 11 countries and um, has topped its funding for the second time already in four months. Uh, the Berlin-based company has extended its Series B round to over 100 million euros now, up from 60 million, which were disclosed in October. Um, now, additional capital is a mix of equity and debt financing provided by Moscow's RTP Global, London's Novata, and an unnamed U.S. debt fund. And um, as uh, I am speaking, I realize it's all dollars, not euros. Then we have Bird. Bird confirms an acquisition of Berlin scooter rival Cirque. Um, TechCrunch has had an article about this. Um, so we also see that the market is winnowing down a bit. And one quote from um, TechCrunch that stuck with us was, if you didn't see this coming, then clearly you didn't have your eyes on the road. Bird, the LA-funded e-scooter giant, has confirmed that it is acquiring European competitor Cirque, uh, the micromobility company founded by Lukas Gadowski of Delivery Hero fame. The deal, for which terms remain undisclosed, was first reported by Financial Times late last week. Meanwhile, TechCrunch revealed in late November that Cirque was facing difficulties and had issues around of layoffs following so-called operational learnings. Back to you. Yes, let's talk a little bit about banking. Warengold Bank, headquartered in Hamburg, opens a new fintech hub in Berlin. They have a strategic focus on financing online credit platforms since 2015. They claim in the press release, Warengold was founded 1995 and holds a full banking license since 2013. They also have offices in London and Sofia. And now a little bit subdued mood because this is the grave digger area. Treasure Hunt, the Berlin based mobile game studio, is bankrupt, reports Deutsche Startups. This is surprising since a chain of sports betting outfits, Merkur Spielotheken, as well as business angels, have been investing 6 million in the company. And last but not least, sad news as well Opley, the Berlin based car sharing startup, closes its business. They claimed 60,000 customers, but a financing round fell through and so they had to close shop. In the past, they have been active in Berlin, Hamburg and Munich. And of course, we do have some articles stay ahead of the curve. Christian, that was very short, but we like it that way, don't we? It was very short, yes. 
But uh, yeah, with the stay ahead of the curve there also, we have some productivity related material. For example, five things highly productive people do every Sunday that most others don't. So I will just spend my time on this, the time that I now want. I mean, let's not tell those medium postings writers. <laughs> we'll see. Great. It's It's been like 15 minutes. We hope you enjoyed it. Next month, we'll be back with a little bit longer news. And keep in mind this this year, no June, no July, no August news. But we'll have a few more before we uh, go into summer break. Until then, Chris, see you. Bye bye. See you. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.